So, welcome everyone to another Football Manager video. It has been a while. It was, about, I think it was about August 2017, last time I played in this save, or last time I recorded in this save. And since I've completed my Football Manager 2006 save, and I've been sacked from St. Johnson in both Football Managers 2005 and 2007 with, shall we say, varying success, um, I decided to come back to my Football Manager 2008 an 8 save where, oh, as you can see, I'm still in charge of St. Johnston. Um, we just got promoted, we just won the first division, but we've got relegated, as you can see. That is the unfortunate news. You probably saw the title. I did concede 99 goals, and I'm still in a job. How am I still in a job? Well, there's a few reasons for that. I'll explain the reasons for why we got relegated in a bit. Reasons, oh, look at that. Oh, dear. <laughs> I didn't realise that was bad. But as you can see, the board wants the team to establish itself in the Premier League by the end of the two-year plan. They're extremely worried following the club's relegation. They're struggling to see how the team is going to achieve its long-term targets. See, that was always full. For the entirety of the season, that was full because we were in the Premier League prior to the two-year target, which is now. So, in theory, they should actually sack me. They might sack me after the season ends. So, this could be the final kind of time I'm manager of St. Johnston. But so far, I'm still on the job. And as far as I know, I'll be, you know, challenging for the first division next season. Um, but yeah, as you can see, that was that's down low, but it was up high. So, I think that's like kind of a fail-safe kind of thing. So, for example, in previous versions, you might get promoted and then relegated immediately and you'd be sacked. So they were kind of forgetting what you'd already done for the club, whereas this kind of saves that into the game's memory, I think. That's what I'm guessing. As you can see, they're not... Yeah, they're disappointed with the management of the team. I mean, they should have sat me ages ago when I was conceding, like, seven goals in one game, five in another. Yeah, you want to know how what the games went, given I conceded 99 goals? Well, do you know what? I'm just going to spoil it all right now. There you go. There's a list of games, as you can see conceding goal after goal after goal. It got boring, honestly. It got boring watching the team concede five goals, six goals. I, to be honest, I didn't mind losing 5-0 to Celtic, but games like 1-0 to Kilmarnock, that, like, come on. that was Games like that is when it gets annoying. You know, you really want to be at least picking up points from those games. Um, but I, the thing is, we weren't actually that far away. Why did we get relegated? Well, for a few reasons. One, my inadequacy. I'm not going to lie. Am I the best at this game? No, I'm not. I'm very inexperienced with uh, this particular game, 2008. It's been, well, when I started playing again, the save, it's been about two and a half years since I played it. So I'm, you know, a little bit inexperienced. There's more to it. Tactics matter a lot more. Um, player personalities, player interaction, that's a bigger thing than it was in, well, 2006 was the version I was uh, playing recently. So overall, uh, inexperience, by inexperience, is what ultimately got the team relegated. Another thing is the team just wasn't good. Now, I came up with a club with a squad that was nowhere near as good as any of the other squads. I had to look around the clubs and they were, like the other clubs were just so much better, their players were so much better. So I had to bring in, well, I basically I panic bought, as you can see. That's the players that went out and then those are the players that came in and as you can see, there are a lot of them. Are they good enough? Well, a lot of them weren't. Incidentally, a lot of them had been signed by myself two and a half years ago on like, like two and a half years ago, IRL that is, not in-game. Um, so two and a half years ago I'd signed, I think the top, top four players on uh, Bosman's um, and they came in and did they do the job? Well, I signed them before I knew I got promoted, I think that's the key. I thought I was going to be in the first division with these players but no, I was in the Premier League. Some of them didn't even play, some of them did and didn't do that well, in fact most of them didn't do that well. Uh, that guy did okay. Um, this guy here, he he played one game off the bench. He's, yes. Anyway, um, and then I panic bought a bunch of other players, loads of loan signings. Some of them were good, some of them were trash. And I found myself with a massive, that's my first team squad. That's my reserve squad. Under 19s doesn't really matter, but there you go. That gives you an idea of the number of players I've got on the books. Some of them are out on loan at the minute. So it's really... It's really difficult to manage this squad. We also had loads of injuries throughout the season, although I'm not going to use that as an excuse. Also, setting up a defence. I've always prided myself in setting up a defence. I should, just to finish my previous point, 
Uh, the point is the squad just wasn't good enough. It wasn't as good as the other teams. The other teams had, like, especially the top six. The top six were just far, far better. They were light years away from us. Even Kilmarnock. The only four teams we could get near were Aberdeen, Motherwell, St Mirren and Gretna. And I'm pretty sure we lost to all of them at one point or another throughout the season. Uh, our away form was poor, as you can see here. Actually, our away form is not as bad. Not, like, it's only just marginally worse than St Mirren's. Interesting. So... Yeah, we picked up basically four points from our last, like, few away games, and that's probably what made that more respectable. But our away form was terrible. Home form, well, says it all, really. It used to be good, and then we lost to the last day of the season. Or, we no, we lost to Kilmarnock. The point is, our home form was terrible. Our away form was terrible. Overall, terrible. But we were only four points behind, despite the fact we had a minus 51 goal difference. And we, could, we scored 48 goals, which is the third highest. Joint fourth... No, not highest, lowest, joint fourth lowest. Two more goals in the final game of the season and we would have been mid-table for goals for. So, yeah, take from that what you will. But yeah, we've now got a massive squad. Loads of, loads of loans will be going. I've never had to deal with a relegation before. I want to stay. I want to stay and deal with it, but obviously that's up to the board. They might sack me eventually. But they did offer me a new contract. That's one of the reasons I don't think I was sacked. They offered me a new contract. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you, you we, we can see here contracts. No, that's loans, contracts. Yeah, right here. James and Douglas signs a new deal with St. John's. This was like near the end of the season. It was like pretty much we had to win and hope results went our way for us to stay up. And they offered me a new deal. Like, are they? <laughs> what are they on <laughs> to want to do that? So, I don't know. I, as I said, I feel like the challenge of trying to get promoted after being relegated, after being promoted, is something I want to take up. But we'll have to wait and see. So, I'm not going to go through all our transfers. The key transfers that you need to know about are uh, this guy here, Damon Gray. Uh, he's I, I famously scored at Ibrox in real life uh, for Partick Thistle in the Scottish Cup about twelve years ago. I remember that. There's a f clip on YouTube of it. I signed him. He's he's at Hibs in this game. I think it was actually at Hibs when he went on loan to Partick as well. So probably similar year. But yeah, he was top scorer for us. Played a load of games, got a load of goals and assists. Definitely our best player, hands down. So he was a key player. Andrew Howell, I got Fay Rangers. He played a few games, did all right. He was... Oh, Ivan Campo. Now, a bit sad, he's had to retire because he's broken his leg. Um, but he was a key player for us. He did okay. He wasn't terrible. He was more consistent than other people. Like, he would get sevens and sixes across the board. He wouldn't. He really, rarely dip below that. Uh, Rocco Quinn, he was on loan at us last season in the first division. And I got him back again on loan. Um, but he was very inconsistent. As you can see, he's, he's done well recently with sevens and eights. But uh, if we go back a bit, well, you see sixes here. But there was times when he would get fives and that. And it, was, it just wasn't good. He was very inconsistent. And I played Martin Hardy ahead of him at points. And is there anyone else that's... Dermot McCaffrey, he was on loan from Hibs. Very good centre-back. As you Five goals. Five goals from centre-back. Uh, Northern Irish International. 25 appearances, not bad. And anyone else? Anyone else that's remotely worth speaking about? I did make a few, three loan signings in the uh, January. One of which I sent back because he was rubbish. Um, James Sinclair. I got Peter Hartley in from Sunderland. He was all right. He was decent. Got decent rating for us. Scored a few goals. Probably helped us in the latter part of the season to get a more respectable points tally. And that guy played a bit as well. All I remember is that he gave away a few penalties. Not that it really mattered because we were conceding goals left, right and centre. The defence was shocking. But yeah, that's the thing. Setting up a defence. How do you set up a defence? So this was the tactic I used uh, from YouTube. That won not my... YouTube, but someone else's YouTube that won the first division that helped me win the first division. In terms of setting up a defense, what do you do? I was I resorted to this, and this sort of worked. When I played this, I conceded less goals, so that that's obvious. I've got well all the time. I'll have eleven men behind the ball, but generally, if the fir first line gets passed, I'll have a pretty solid base here, especially with the two defensive midfielders. Now, people would call this negative. It is negative, but when you concede ninety nine goals, you don't really have any other choice. Basic four four twos, okay? Two banks of four. How do you set up a defence? Now, I didn't use this formation too much, and when I did, it sort of worked. But I guess the issue is the defensive line. The defensive line is massive. And I think what happens is, they say, well, generally what, what they say is too high, and you'll get balls over the top, and pacey strikers run onto it. Too deep, and you'll get 
overwhelmed, you'll, you, your line will eventually break down because there'll just be so much pressure on it. You'll have your tall target men closer to goal. Um, so generally what I like to do is just play it centrally. Now, in a kind of counter-attacking tactic, you want it probably slightly deeper because you want to kind of contain the opposition. But at the same time, I didn't really feel that was necessary. And a lot of guides say you should play it high. Even when playing defensive, you should push it high. Basically, the point is setting up a defence in this game is very challenging, especially when your defence is not nearly as good as, you know, other people's defences or their attacks. You know, it, it wasn't good enough to solve the attacks. There was so many critical errors there was so many freak goals as well freak goals i'm not gonna lie was a like you know goals from here like this area remember roberto carlos's famous goal the ball's bouncing towards the uh the goal line or the tu yeah the goal line and then he volleys it across his body across the goal and it goes in goals like that maybe not quite that spectacular but from a similar sort of area uh, long shots loads of mistakes unbelievable but that just goes to show it's player personality not all players are going to be 100 percent focused 100 percent of the time that's why the best players are the best players is because mentally they're with it mentally they're not going to make mistakes all the time especially at this level whereas these players well they may they might be full-time players but they're going to make mistakes they're not messi or ronaldo or insert name of a top player who's at the very top and doing well Anyway, yeah, so those were my transfers. That was my defensive struggles. Uh, I'm usually very good at setting up a defence. Remember in Football Manager 2007, that was my strong point. Um, in terms of top goal scorers, oh, look at that. So Damon Gray and Rocco Quinn, both top goal scorers. Uh, Rocco Quinn actually got... He didn't get any assists. That's strange. Maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. But, I mean, goal, as I said, goals wasn't the issue. It was the defence. Uh, let's go to stats uh, overall. So Damon Gray... Rocco Quinn top scorers, most assists. Sean Evans got 19. That is insane. Man of the match, Sean Evans got three. Um, average rating, highest was Jamie McCluskey. He did well, but he got injured at one point. But he was he developed pretty well. Uh, as you can see, one goal, seven assists. Not too shabby. Who else is up there? Paul, uh, it's not Paul Hartley. Peter Hartley, Rocco Quinn, Sean Evans, yeah. So only a few people got above seven. As you can see, the lower players... Didn't play an awful lot. I mean, Thomas Chern is the only one, but I mean, goalkeeper, he's, he's a goalkeeper. He's, he conceded a lot of goals, so <laughs> you don't expect him to get a good rating from that. Uh, right, so we got that. Oh, another reason why we got relegated is because I couldn't buy any better players because, as you can see, my budget was already over. Now, we do have a balance of 1.1 million. Don't know how. Probably because the balance was not that high or the budget wasn't that high, but I guarantee you this budget was a lot less than all of the other teams. We can have a look here, actually. If we go to contracts. All right, so there's my contracts. Uh, let's move on to the next team. Yeah, look at that. Immediately, St. Mirren, a team of a similar size, have players on much higher wages. There's Aberdeen. I mean, obviously, Celtic will. They're Celtic, Dundee United. You can just see the difference. Gretna, pretty compatible to us, but still, they've got a lot of players that are much higher. As you can see, we've got one of the smallest budgets in the division. And back to us, three players over a grand. Actually, how many players... Okay, we've got three three other players in the reserve squad that have over... That's a bit of a waste of money. That is very bad management on my part. So, I'm not going to lie, I did make some mistakes, but the game's also difficult, and I was up against it, because the board wanted mid a mid-table finish with a team that was no better than a first division squad. There you go, rant over. Let's have a look at the games then. Um, I didn't win any cups, as you can see, but we'll, we'll get into those. So I did a bunch of pre-season friendlies. I lost to Kilmarnock. I... I've never played against a team that I'm going to be playing against in the competitive season in a preseason friendly, but for some reason Kilmarnock offered a friendly. I accepted. We lost 5-3, and that was a sign of things to come. <laughs> Loads of goals scored, but even more conceded. Uh, we beat Bells Hill 3-0, Clack and a Cudden 5-0, Dunbar United 5-0, lost to Braga 4-0, but I mean they're Braga. And then we beat Civil Service under 19s 4-1, probably just for a morale boost. And then it was into the season. Now, I'm not going to go through every game. I'm not going to click on them. I'll click on the key ones. But it starts from day one. Immediately, we lost 3-1 to Cali. We then lost 5-2 to Dungeon United and then 2-1 to Kilmarnock. And immediately, that's 10 goals conceded in three games and four scored. That's pretty much the ratio that you see at the end of the season. Let's see. We've got Rangers. 3-0 loss. That was in the league. And then, then everything turns around. We get Sterling Albion, who were in the division below us. And we go net nine. In fact, Rocco Quinn nets four from midfield and Stanislav Varga nets a hat-trick from centre-back. 
This guy played four games. He was rubbish. I barely played him. I'm letting him leave at the end of the season, but he scored a hat trick in the League Cup. So I'll show you these goals anyway. Oh yeah, Peter McDonald also missed a penalty. So it could have been 10. You lucky Egypt, so it could have been 10. Jamie McCluskey netted on the first minute. And then, as you can tell, Varga probably got most of his goals from corners on the third minute and the eighth minute. Uh, Rocco Quinn got his first on the 37th. Peter McDonald then scored on 39 to make it 5-0 at half time. And then Rocco Quinn scored on 52 minutes, on 68 minutes. Varga netted again on 74, and then Rocco Quinn netted his fourth on 88. So a hat-trick for a centre-back and four for a midfield. I mean, admittedly, he was probably playing... Yeah, OK, he was playing attacking midfield, but still. You'd more expect a striker to be getting four goals. So 9-0 sent us through to the next round of the League Cup. Um, it was back to the same old, same old as we lost 4-0 to Hearts. And then we came up against Gretna, who are, I knew were going to be one of our challenge, like, challenges when it came to uh, relegation. Managed to beat them 3-2. First win of the season. First point of the season. Um, we still conceded, but who cares? We got the three points. Um, as you can see, they took the lead on for the 40th minute. Rocco Quinn equalised right before half-time. Uh, then Damon Gray netted on 51, Rocco Quinn netted soon after, and uh, then they pulled one back, and we managed to hold on until the bitter end. So a 3-2 win over Gretna, followed by a 3-1 win over Motherwell, who were another team that I did well against generally. Chris Templeton netted one of his only goals of the season on 8 minutes, Sean Evans netted on 36. Uh, they did pull one back, but Rocco Quinn netted a penalty in 52. We got a 3-1 win, and that gave us 6 points. So at this point, we actually did not bad, so... We were bottom, and then with a few wins, we were up and out of the relegation zone before dropping back in. Um, if we go back to the fixtures, you'll see that happen. So we lost 1-0 to Killy. Again, 1-0 defeats are the ones that really hurt. Uh, lost 5-0 to Celtic, but, I mean, that's a moral victory in theory uh, compared to what comes later. Uh, we lost 2-1 to Hibs. We usually went behind pretty early, like teams just crushed us, and then we might nick a goal or two later on, but it really didn't matter. And then we beat... St Mirren. St Mirren were another team that were kind of low down and around us. Rocco Quinn opened the scoring of 47 minutes. Uh, Steve McGarry pulled one back or equalised for them uh, before Damon Gray netted a winner on 65 minutes. Again, we started that classic 3-4-1-2 formation that enabled us to win the first division. We then drew with Aberdeen. You might think this is a good point. It's not. They netted in the 90th minute. We then played Cali, got a 1-1 draw. I say we got a 1-1 draw. Cali was, were the ones that got a 1-1 draw. Ian Black netted with nine minutes to go. Magoma, J Jacques Makoma, who of course played for us last season in the first division, got the goal in 68 minutes. We then lost 3-0 to Dungeon United, 2-1 to Komarnik. Those are two teams I just couldn't beat all season, which really sucked. And then this is where it gets really, really bad because we start just leaking goals. Four goals against Rangers, four goals against Hearts, three against Gretna, three against Motherwell, three against Celtic, four against Hibs, three against St Mirren. Some of those teams we beat in the first round of games. Some of those teams we really, really needed to beat. Um, but in the end, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine games from our last point and we concede... How many goals is that? Uh, five, nine... 13, 16, uh, 19, 21, 25, 28 goals in 9 games. That's an average of about 3 per game. Just over 3 per game, if you don't know. But the thing is, we did score a lot as well. You know, we scored 1 against Killy, 2 against Rangers, 2 against Gretna, 2 against Hearts. We even managed to nick 1 against Celtic. So, very, very weird times. But I'm guessing teams were just, they were just trying to, you know, beat us heavily. And so they were left open at the back. So it was, you know... It got easier to score against them the longer the game went on, basically. We got some respite from our drubbings in the league as we managed to draw 1-1 with Dundee, who were in the division below us. Um, Peter Hartley netted in the third minute before uh, Brandy pulled one back a minute later for uh, Dundee, our rivals, of course. The replay went to uh, Dens Park in Dundee. 4-0 victory for uh, ourselves. Damon Gray netted on nine minutes. Martin Hardy got the first of his two goals on 13 minutes, Maxime netted on 23 minutes, and then Hardy got another goal on 77. And that sent us through to the next round of the Scottish Cup where we would play Hamilton. But in the meantime, we managed to, actually, we did get a point against United. This was a very, very, very tough point. David Barron scored an own goal. He made so many mistakes, but he scored an own goal. Fair enough. And then 
Andrew Howell turned into Ronaldo and dribbled the length of the field and scored from left back. Don't know how. I'll show that on screen if I remember. Um, and then we just basically held out for the rest of the game. As you can see, they battered us. 14 shots, 6 on target. What can you do? But we got a point. Uh, it was then back to the same old, same old. Smashed 4-0 by Killy. Uh, we lost 1-0, unfortunately, to Aberdeen. with Oh, that was 5 minutes to go. I remember that as well. 5 minutes to go and we lose a goal. Scottish Cup action. We stormed into a 3-0 lead uh, against Hamilton in the Scottish Cup 5th round. Rocco Quinn opened the scoring on in the first minute. Peter Hartley netted on 22. Uh, Sean Evans netted on 52. And then we went and gave away two goals to Jim Hamilton and Grant Bredner, two veterans of the Scottish game. And then we had to go defensive and hold out for the rest of the game just to make sure we got through to the quarterfinals, as I knew that would secure me favour with the board. So 3-2 win against Hamilton, got through to the next round, most important thing. We then lost 4-2 to Rangers, pretty much a repeat of the previous score, isn't it? Yeah, 4-2, two 4 twos against Rangers. Lost 3-0 to Cali, but what's new? Um, actually, we drew 1-1 last time, so... Yeah, although that was at home. This was an important game. 2-2 draw against Hearts. Very significant. We were 2-0 down with 10 minutes to go before David Weatherston came up with a goal in the 81st minute and then Dermot McCaffrey equalised with a minute left to play to get us a vital away point. And that was our only away point until like the last few weeks of the season. The only point we got away from home happened to be against Hearts who finished third. So... There are no slouches. Uh, anyway, when they lost 3-1 at home to Grena, this was a game that pretty much relegated us. We should... Well, no, we shouldn't have won this because obviously they deserve to win it because they were better. Oh, I remember this game. Lee Carsley scored like two 30-yarders. Who scores two 30-yarders in a game? It's so rigged. It is absolutely rigged. David Weatherston scored in the final minute, but who cares? So that was pretty much the game that relegated us. Although, our fortunes did improve. We beat Motherwell 4-2. Um, we can look at the goals here. Damon Green got a double, as did Dermot McCaffrey. Goals came on 16 minutes to equalise. Um, 27 minutes to equalise again before McCaffrey uh, put us ahead for the first time in the game on 35. And then Damon Gray rounded off the win on 78 minutes. Uh, we then lost 3-0 to Celtic, but that was kind of expected. We then got a very, very, very important 2-1 win over St Mirren. We came from a goal down. Uh, Steve McGarry scored, uh, opened the scoring before Damon Gray uh, and Martin Hardy both scored in 59 minutes and 68 minutes respectively. Um, let's have a look at the stats of this actually. Um, yeah, it was pretty even but we managed to shade it just, it was a home game, we should really be winning these games and we did. So, very important three points. Uh, we then lost 7-1 to Celtic and uh, we then lost 5-1 to Hibs which I think was actually worse, especially given the fact two players got sent off but Whatever. Also, they missed a penalty. Also, Celtic missed a penalty, so it could have been eight. Uh, we then, after conceding 12 goals in two games, managed to keep our first clean sheet of the season. First clean sheet of the season. And this is what... Is this into the split? This was the final pre-split game. Final pre-split game. We keep a clean sheet to Aberdeen. Uh, David Weatherston managed to um, get a goal in 13 minutes. Dermot McCaffrey uh, headered in one on 45 minutes and then Sean Evans scored from a rebound uh, after Gary Irvin missed a penalty although incidentally I actually looked away out in disgust that he missed the penalty and then I looked back and he'd scored or no I clicked onto another screen and I was like you know trying to figure out what to do and then I saw oh wait hang on we have scored let's see next was a 1-0 win over Grena so our second clean sheet of the league season Peter Hartley getting the only goal of the game as uh, Gretna no doubt bat yep, battered us 17 shots 11 on target keeper was a hero Kevin Cuthbert, although Peter Hartley got mad of the match, presumably for his goal. Then we, uh, well, 2-1 win over Motherwell, gave us three wins in a row, and it gave me manager of the month for April, which was very, very epic. Mark Reynolds scored the funniest own goal ever. Uh, I'll play that on screen now. Uh, that that was to equalise after Marcus Patelain scored a penalty, and then Damon Green netted a winner on 63 minutes to get us another vital three points. So this was kind of like the recovery, effectively. I mean, look at all these draws and losses that. We had a few a few draws in there. Uh, but then, when we beat Motherwell, that started a run where, okay, we lost to Celtic and Hibs, but we beat Motherwell, we beat St Mirren, we beat Aberdeen, we beat Gretna, we beat Motherwell. That's 15 points on the board in, like, a couple of months. 15 points in, in a couple of months like, a few months before that would have been unthinkable. Uh, it all went to pot, though, as Kilmarnock scored. Oh, yeah, don't talk about that game. 
um, things got worse. This was a game that we got relegated, which, incidentally, had we won that, we would have gone into the final day with a chance of staying up. Um, unfortunately, uh, David Weatherston gave us the lead and then Billy Mehmet ruined it uh, on the error mark. Billy Mehmet scored against me so many. I don't think there's a player that scored against me more on Football Manager than Billy Mehmet. Could be wrong. But there you go. Um, and then final game of the season, I just didn't care. I was just, to be honest, I I kind of thought to myself, because Aberdeen got the three goals, they took my conceded goals tally to 99, and I was like, I think I gave my keeper a long faro to uh, try and enable them to score a fourth and take it to 100, but they never did. Incidentally, when I try to let in a goal, I fail. So I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, as you can see there, 99 goals conceded. Probably a record. We can have a look here. Most, yep, most conceded, 99. Don't think that will be repeated anytime soon. And yeah, that is that is it for the season, ultimately. Um, I guess you'll find out... Well, basically, here's the thing. If I am sacked, I'm going to just look for another job. So either way, there will be another video. Otherwise, it'll just be me and how I get on next season, which could result in a sacking if I don't win the league. But the good thing is I do have a lot of players. So I just need to get rid of the dead wood and uh, rebuild. Uh, I got a new affiliate club. I should point that out. East Fife. Can't remember when the start date was. Oh, yeah, 2008. So start of the season. Um, we'll be able to send players on loan to them. Um, they'll host an annual friendly and we'll pay them some dosh basically. I've not done the awards yet, purely because I just wanted to get this out before all my loan players went away so you could see how they did, you know, see what their stats were, because like, well, Rocco Quinn, for example, was one of the top scorers and one of the top players. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. It's interesting, put it that way. In some ways, I enjoy it. Okay, we lost 99 goals, but the small moments, like 9-0 win over Sterling Albion, the coming from two down to drawing with hearts, things like that. The the wins at the end of the season, the five wins, the 15 points we picked up in two months was was amazing. The games that we, we, we won there were hard fought and well won. And I was getting a grip, to, grip of the tactics towards the end. I mean, obviously we capitulated against Aberdeen. But look at this. Look at this from uh, the drubbing at Hibs to the last game of the season. Three goals conceded in five games. That's pretty good for what we did this season. Much better than 28 goals in nine games. So there you go. That is it for our first and maybe our only attempt at SPL survival in Football Manager 2008. Next season, hopefully, we'll win the first division. Hopefully, we will be back. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. going to finish the video now, but I'm going to leave you with a little montage of goals that we scored this season that you haven't seen already so basically goals that we because we scored so many goals in the games we got thrashed in nine games here although we lost 28 we probably scored over 10 so we scored a load of goals this season that i couldn't show during the actual video so i'm going to leave you with a little montage maybe all of them maybe some of the best you'll just have to to wait and see but thank you very much for watching enjoy the clips and i'll see you later bye for now